Good morning chaps, so today's quick talk is on the FV4004 Conway 120mm heavy gun tank. The Conway came about as a result of a deteriorating situation in 1950. The British felt that it was possible that they could be drawn into war with the USSR and at a time in which the development and production of the heavy gun tank FV214 Conqueror had not been completed. The powers that be felt that the UK would have no tanks capable of defeating the IS-3 tank, which they believed the USSR had large numbers of. It was proposed by the director of the Fighting Vehicle Research Division that the 120mm gun intended for Conqueror should be mounted on the proven Centurion hull, as a short-term counter to the IS-3. The director's proposal was accepted at a meeting held at the Fighting Vehicle Research and Development Establishment on the 2nd of October 1950, along with many other acronym heavy attendees. The design of the short-term heavy gun tank was influenced by two main considerations. The first was the urgency of which it was required to be in service, and the second was the need to produce it without interfering with the Centurion 20-pounder tank production program or the development production of the long-term Conqueror heavy gun tank. These considerations led to the adoption of a design in which the hull would be the same as that of the Centurion 20-pounder tank, except in minor details such as ammunition stowage and the gun clamp, etc. Because of this, the problem of suspension loading had to be solved. It was felt that if the gun had been mounted conventionally with its trunnion sufficiently far forward to enable the breech to recoil within a turret race, its centre of gravity would have been so far forward so that the life of the front suspension would have been unacceptable. Furthermore, with the turret out of balance, it would not have been able to rotate with the existing traverse equipment. It was, of course, impossible to increase the turret ring size to overcome the balance issue without seriously affecting the development of the regular gun tank, which was one of the listed criteria. The solution, then, was to raise the trunnion height, thus allowing the gun to recoil above the turret ring into the rear bulge. This meant that the design would not interfere in Centurion's production, and had the bonus of allowing shells to be ejected out of the back of the turret if required. The downside to this was a taller profile with a reduced elevation and gun depression of just plus 10 degrees and minus 5 degrees only. It's also worth noting at this stage the vehicle is simply known as the FV4004 Centurion. An initial wooden mock-up model was produced which differed quite a lot from the finalised version. The turret was more angled, with larger distinctive cheeks on either side, and had a narrower overall front, with a more squared look to the mantlet, while the later, wider turret had inset cheeks to prevent obstruction to the driver on turning the turret. It's claimed the turret was designed by the Oster Aircraft Company, and the metal plate made by Chubbs of Wolverhampton, before going over to the Royal Ordnance Factory's Barmbo for building which seems to contradict some of the official information written at the time, and will require further archive digging, I'm sure. What is known is that several initial turret mock-ups were made and sent for firing trials. Due to a lack of 120mm guns, these were fitted with 88mm guns taken from leftover Tigers, as a stand-in gun with weights added to it. These tanks were then subject to 6-pounder and 17-pounder shots to primarily test the weld seams as well as to test the new resilient bushes to the mantle internal mechanisms from the impacts. Tests were also carried out versus triangular 20mm insert plates on the lower left and right hand side of the turret which proved successful, but the remaining surviving vehicle appears to be missing these. Overall the vehicle was found to be immune to the armour piercing capped ballistic cap rounds from the 17-pounder. However, hits to the side of the mantle resulted in internal splash, and machine gun fire to the vehicle's rear sides caused heavy spooling. At least two test beds were used, not one as often claimed. The first is based on the Centurion Hull 03ZR06, which was likely a former Centurion Mark II armoured recovery hull, with initially a wooden mock-up turret gun, and later a soft steel turret. A second vehicle, which currently survives, was used to test the gun and gather data. It was found that the vehicle was very accurate, and although it could only ever fire APDS and HESH, it was good out to about 2,000 yards. However, it also provided a lot of obscuration, which prevented the fall of shot being monitored. This vehicle also has threading for a muzzle brake on the gun, which is still visible today. However, I have not yet found any images of such a muzzle actually being fitted. 
As the war with the USSR luckily did not occur, and the Conqueror came into being later on, no further work was done on these test beds, other than some comparative trials in which the system was found to be inferior to Conqueror versus the IS-3, and inferior to the Centurion versus tanks such as the T-34-85, which took place in 1954. Only one now survives in a poor state at Bovington Tank Museum, as years of being left outside and no corrosion treatment has seen much of the metal eaten away in places. Heavy gun tank Conway remains an interesting curiosity from a darker time in history, and in an attempt to counter a vehicle that ultimately proved no real threat. Well guys, if you like this little quick chat, do let me know below, add any thoughts or comments, or if there's a particular vehicle you want me to research, do give me some feedback. And until next time, doodle pip.